We're speaking with Dan McGinn. Uh, he's a PR expert, a PR crisis management expert, I should say, and he joins us from Washington, D.C. Dan, this latest wrinkle about engineers warning Steve Jobs and other phone carriers warning Steve Jobs about the antenna problems, how much does this raise the ante up the ante for Apple and its press conference tomorrow? There's no, there's no question that puts pressure on the situation, but that's not surprising. In these situations where you've got a, a, a complaint about a product and a debate about whether there is a problem or how big a problem, you'll often have some information coming out from the inside where people said, I warned them, or a supplier will say, I warned them, but there's no question it adds pressure. And uh, beyond hardware and software fixes, which is what Apple has been contending, there's also the company's attitude that's a little bit of concern here. Apple has been blocking links on its user support pages to the Consumer Reports Review, that damaging review, censoring discussion in its forums. Why this approach? Is it just Apple being Apple, or is it the, the cult of secrecy in Silicon Valley over not sharing industry secrets? You've got a collision going on here between the Apple that just makes great products that people love, that they see as innovation, and the Apple that is you know, secretive. It is, it is, uh, it's their nature to hold things close to the vest. And I think what they're seeing is this does not work. Apple, Apple is a promise, and a promise is great innovation, and we're going to just wow you with what we do. So when they say they didn't have a problem or they say just don't hold it that way, it's not satisfactory to consumers. I think Apple's realizing it. I expect they're going to take a very different course very quickly. That brings uh, an interesting contrast to mind. Back in 1997, when Apple cut its price and the early adopters howled, Apple then turned around and gave them a refund. It moved very quickly. It issued an apology on its website. It didn't really take that approach this time around. Why is that? Well, I'm sure that that's a debate going on inside. Here's what I say to people. The most dangerous position to be in as a company today is biggest, best, first, and most. That's when you lose, you lose your sensitivity. You're not listening as well. You have too much confidence in what you're doing. That's a risk that Apple runs. Look, Apple makes great products. I'm a big fan. I bought the iPad when it first came out. I think they will get this right. But they, they needed to be more sensitive. They needed to listen better. And they need, and they need to accept the fact that maybe they're not perfect and there's a way to work cooperatively here. And at the same time, expectations from consumers are higher as well because this is Apple that we're talking about, right? They have set these, they've set these expectations high. They've wanted people to believe in that. That's the promise of, 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 of Apple. But also understand, consumers don't only have higher expectations for what you're going to promise them. They have higher expectations about their rights to insist, sure. to, to work with you to make the changes. Now, Dan, very quickly here, there's no question that Apple will survive this, but how does it get ahead of the story and, and come out stronger? What Apple needs to do is, is, is jump on this quickly, make a change in direction, don't be embarrassed by that, embrace it, acknowledge that there's a problem, and set dramatic action that they're going to take quickly to solve it. And then what they need to do is not forget this, learn this lesson, because Apple can benefit from it if they don't forget it, if they, if they tell themselves, we've got to be more, more sympathetic and, and respond in a better way faster next time. They're going to survive this just like Toyota's going to survive it, but this should be a warning for them. All right. I think they've heard the warning. Thank you so much. We've been speaking with Dan McGinn, the CEO of TMG Strategies. He was joining us from Washington.